Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Well, it happened again. Old man Winter sent his toady to give us a portent of things to come. Dipped his snowballs on our pumpkin. Sure enough, it is hunting season once again. Speaking of which, even a bull moose. I should look into that. We're going to have a look at the digital power inverter. These uh, inverters, what give us pure sine wave in order to see, well, how they chooch and what they actually output. Holy shit. That's weeping gongs, buddy. You ever get yourself into a shitiation here? Like false bravado can't get you out of it? Look at this thing. I was expecting a hamster wheel and a couple of relays. Uh, ain't nothing for it. And to actually get in here, figure out what the hell is going on. Look at the Jesus thing. Let's see here. Ah, nothing. Well, let's tell a joke. Uh, hunting joke, hunting joke. What is the difference between a hunter and a fisherman? A hunter lies in wait. A fisherman waits and lies. Now, what is going on to the best of my ability? Well, how this works, first off, how do they take 12 volts, take rather, 12 volts DC change it into 120 volts angry up them pixies and also instead of making them just run in a in a straight line they make them run back and forth at 120 second times a second the thing is this is not going to be a perfect sinusoid because what they're essentially doing is taking little switches turning them off and on very very quickly that gives you ones and zeros it gives you uh, square wave and the way they do that is the quicker that they switch them off and on is the closer that they can approximate that sinusoidal waveform and we will see that on the osmeloscope periodically designing a switch mode power supply such as this is a non-trivial task and you see a lot of design work went into this and especially for the value engineering taking very common components and packing them in there common components the more common a component is the cheaper it is so what they've gone and done is use automotive fuses you can see the amount of current that is potentially able to go through here look at the fuses 35 times one two three four a whole schwack load and they're all paralleled <laughs> they're all paralleled so yeah i'll mention to you that this is built for lead acid batteries. It's not built for a, another kind of chemistry such as lithium that is a little more susceptible to uh, overcharging, under, undercharging and, and noise and that sort of thing because this on the output is going to be noisier as frig and we're gonna rely on the robustness of the battery to be able to take that. So we have all these angry pixies, lots of them going through these fuses, through the traces on the underside of the board. Uh, over here is this DC bus and this, these are capacitors, of course, so they will filter out some of the noise, not all of it, and the noise is going to be coming from the input side of the switch mode. These are transistors and they will be switching very, very quickly on the order of 20 kilohertz, 20,000 times a second. That induces a ripple in the, the input, of course. And that then feeds in, well, that creates heat. So we see there's fans and big old heat sinks here. And then that goes into a massive toroidal transformer. On the input transistors, we see eight of them. Instead of going with one big transistor, four big transistor, they've gone with eight littler transistor and parallel two of them to increase the current cake varying capability they switch to a more common transistor that drives the cost lower. And you have all these diodes that are paralleled up in order to reduce the cost. It's cheaper to get these little jelly bean parts than to get one massive uh, cob. And also there's some more airflow in there, one or not cob, but one monolithic IC, what you bolt down to the board. Now we're gonna get this hooked up to a batteria. Of note, there is no protection, a reverse polarity protection on this. What happens if you mess up your leads? Well, you fry it right away. 
And why you fry it right away is part and parcel of the manufacturing of this thing. It doesn't have any input protection. So we could have a whole bunch of diodes in here and that would uh, prevent us from having, if we reverse the leads, nothing happens. They've omitted that because, well, it's a bomb cost also if you connect it up. Well, there's no warranty for that. You, you done fucked up. These switches essentially, well, these are MOSFETs, right? So they're, they're switches what get actuated with voltage. So you put voltage to the gate, it pulls the switch closed. But part and parcel of the manufacturing process, there is a diode in each one of these. It's a body diode. Now a diode is a one-way check valve for angry pixies. So if you're in the correct orientation, then the body diode blocks the voltage. Nothing happens until you close the switch. Right? However, if you make a mistake, if you fuck up and you put the positive on the negative and the negative on the positive, now the angry pixies coming out of the battery can flow through that body diode. But the body diode can only handle a very minute amount of amperage. And if you have a thousand amps coming out of your battery, it lets the smoke out instantaneously. So if you ever destroy one of these by reversing the polarity, these guys, these input transistors, these MOSFETs, they'll be blown right out. You'll see a shit stain. There'll be smoke all over the place. You let the smoke out. Once you let the magic smoke out, you can't get it back in. There's nothing for it but to replace this thing. If you can get warranty on it, great. If you can't, you can go ahead in here and this is all through hole components so it'd be fuck all in a big ship to just get the get the the number off of here and replace these the other thing you can look at is now these these fail open so what happens is they'll they'll fry and then they go open circuit so nothing goes through so the protection these the, the whatever the 350 amps this is allowing to get in yeah even more than that um very likely these fuses will not protect these mosfets so first things first you check for shit stains then you check the fuses if it's something other than that uh you're probably gonna be hooped one thing i didn't mention these daughter boards here soldered in wave soldered in at 90 degrees you can see this is the brain box here because it's got a clock. It's got a, it's got a quartz crystal oscillator right beside it. Well, I'm charging up the very robust lead acid battery. It was a little bit low, but we're, we're she's trickling in at three amperes. Now, if and you've watched Afrotech mods or uh, Great Scott make their own inverter, you will know that a lot of times the configuration for simpler inverters are a push-pull. I don't believe it, well, it could still be a push-pull configuration, but all of the MOSFETs on the input stage are all the same. They're not an N channel and a P channel. So the, the push-pull, the easy way to make it is with uh, the two opposing MOSFETs. And in this case on the output, it's the same. It is not, they're, they're all the same MOSFETs. So that leads me to believe that this is a, this is an H bridge. However, having said that, I'm not quite sure. It could be a different, a little bit different topology. So we'll go ahead and let this drop down. Should level off at 12.6. We'll give this a test, but um, I'm going to let the battery sit, of course, because charging creates oxygen and hydrogen gas in lead acid batteries. We go uh, ahead and connect up and we see we have all these capacitors in here. We're going to have these capacitors act when you first connect something up, they act like a short circuit. So uh, you get a big spark when you first, when you first touch the, the leads, that big spark could ignite the hydrogen gas from the charging of the battery. So we want to let it sit for a little bit, just for, for not for tits and pickles sake, but for actual safety sake. You ready? Born ready. Concede the champion, you might say. Key, aren't act. Ugh. I hate doing this. 
Oh, that's what I'm missing. My safety squint. Ah, much better. Fuck you. Set the scope for two volts per division, uh, 20 milliseconds in the sweep. We're going to see if we can't get this thing to trigger on some noise. See how much uh, back feeding it does into the battery. Of course, as I said, lead acid is very robust, but if you get a different battery chemistry in there, lithium polymer, it, they don't like voltage spikes. Yeah, okay, so we're at two, six, over voltage by, we got up to like 20 volts on that little spike. And then we see some noise initially. And the, yeah, changes the noise floor, but yeah, much cleaner there. And it is still drawing half uh, an amp, even off. Let's have a look at that. That's on the input, mind. There's the, um, where it turns. That must be the, whoa. That must be the DC bus on the output charging up because the DC bus on the input is automatically charged up as soon as you connect it. Yeah, look at that. Interesting. And then you can hear the noise of something. Here we go, I got the Lavalier mic. Ginger carefully now so as not to turn myself into a Jackson Pollock interpretive dance. We are going to hook up the high side now. Key on deck. That's the startup. The DC bus is charging and then the pulse width modulation starts. You will note that looks nothing like a sinusoidal wavefront, waveform rather. It looks more like pulses. Uh, and that's exactly what we're seeing, pulses. Now, it wasn't just you what configured that that looked terrible. And the, I'll, I'll show you the reason why that looked terrible. Well, I had it on the ground and the hot. And in a household system, the ground and the neutral are essentially the same thing. It's just the neutral is allowed to conduct electricity and the ground only in a fault condition. But in this case, the neutral is completely separate from the ground. It's got a different beast altogether. I'm not quite sure how they perform the ground on these units, but have a look at this waveform now that I've got the line and neutral. That is the hot and the neutral across the oscilloscope leads. Sorry, first day with my tongue tangulation. That is the digital waveform. Their claim to fame and you can see uh, it's not even close to sinusoidal. It's two-step. Well, one, two, yeah. <laughs> and if you average this out, it averages out to 120 volts. We can even do that if we do. V peak to peak, 332 volts. So 170 volts um, AC root mean, or 120 volts root mean square and 170 volts of that peak uh, from the zero. Now let's turn on the grinder and see what happens. Let's try and catch some nasty noise, if we can. We'll trigger it up there. Not really catching any nasty noise, so that's a good thing. But when we're running that, the max amps, 44 amps coming out of that battery. 44 amps to run a grinder. There we have the output waveform under load. You can see it's not exactly rounded off nice. It's pretty horrible looking that way, but it's also not T-bag in that there's no huge voltage spikes would kill electronics. So in this case, even though they're not pure sine wave sinusoidal, and let's, let's get this right off the table here. When you're getting sinusoidal in your house, there is a huge mechanical commutator. There's, there's a, tons and tons of copper rotating in a magnetic field. And that's what gives you the nice, clean sinusoidal. 
load switching off and on and give you a little voltage spikes. Now, in this case, we have load switching on and off internal in the design. So it's going to be noisier. It has to be. And you're never, you're always going to be getting an approximation because all they can do is energize this and de-energize it, a one or a zero, off or on. And the more steps they take, the closer to that nice smooth waveform you get, but you're never ever gonna get there. On the plus side, modern electronics generally do not care. Now, some electronics, as we've seen, like the uh, Keurig, or no, the Schmegma machine on the sailboat, it did not like the inverter power for whatever reason. There was some sort of zero cross or whatever. So we added an inductor in there, the uh, Vita Vitamix blender, and it worked. So in some cases, if you're camping and the, the electronics don't want to chooch for you, what you can do is add a little inductive load on there and that smooths out those ones and zeros. We're looking for the smoothness. In most cases though, it doesn't, nobody. It, the pixies don't care. They're still doing the work. So this has been uh, an inverter and a, not a high end, but a mid grade inverter. And we can see what the waveform was and sort of the topology of how it works. Thanks for joining me here in the shop for a, a chuckle and a, a poke at nasty bits. Keep your dick in a voice. And now we got the scale set to 50. Ah, framing, you fuck. <laughs> uh, we got the scale set to 50 volts on the output. Holy fuck. This thing's got an auto chooch, so there's not so much uh, wankery going on. Well, there's far more wankery in my case, but less, uh, less seasickness. But geez, let's cr Holy fuck. Okay, I'll, I'll get her. Just go and have a beer, chill for a bit, and in about 20 minutes, we'll have her all fingered out. Huh? Huh? Oh, wait, I got a better idea. There we go. Stupid like a fox. <laughs>